Right, welcome into this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where we cover every feature and everything in Photoshop in 30 seconds or less. Really, it ends up being more like three to seven minutes or so, but the name works, so we stick with it. And today we're gonna to talk about customizing the Photoshop toolbar, but we've got a sponsor, WP Engine. I've hosted tutvid.com on WP Engine. It's a WordPress host. They tune their servers to WordPress and it kicks some serious butt. I've been on WP Engine uh, for over two years now. They're great. Go to tupfid.com slash WP hyphen engine. There's a link in the description of this video. Use the coupon code SPEEDUP, one word, for 20% off your first purchase. It helps support the site, so why not? So creating a custom toolbar in Photoshop. Here's how you do it. There's this little dot, dot, dot ellipsis down here at the bottom of the toolbar. Um, now, I should mention this is one of the newer features in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. You can go edit toolbar or you can click and hold on this icon in the toolbar and choose edit toolbar. So then you get the customized toolbar dialog box. There's a few things you can do here. Of course, you can, when, when we do it, when we end up creating a toolbar, we can save or load a preset if you have specific toolbars you like. I'm not really gonna get into that in this case. Um, of course, you can restore the defaults where let's say we clear all the tools, that wipes everything out of the toolbar. You see that except for the move tool, which we have selected. Um, we can restore defaults and it brings everything back. But let's just say, for instance, uh, we never use the eyedropper, 3D material eyedropper, or any of these tools. Well, when I hover over an individual tool, you see it gets this blue line. That means I can just take the tool and drag it over to extra tools, and boom, it's gone. You can see it's now the 3D material eyedropper tool. But you can actually hover over the edge of the box, and you can take the whole shebang and drop it over here and just get rid of the eyedropper tool altogether. Okay, we can do the same thing here with like the uh, the spot healing brush, right? Let's say we don't use that, uh, the crop tool. Well, you know what? Let's just take the slice tool and the slice select tool out of here and maybe even perspective crop if we don't really use them all that much. And let's say we use the crop tool a lot. So we're going to move the crop tool up here, maybe all the way up to the top, right? We can see our changes being reflected as we do this here in Photoshop. The crop tool is now at the top. That's great. Um, one of the things that's cool and one of the things that you should really take note of here with customizing a toolbar is we can hide any of these options down here at the bottom, the, the whole being able to customize the toolbar option, in which case you just have to go edit toolbar every time you wanted to open this up. I like to keep that there. Um, you can also hide the whole color picker. You can hide quick mask mode. Um, you can hide the uh, different view, viewing options for Photoshop. Now there is this other option here, disable shortcuts for hidden toolbar extras. I like to deselect that. The default in Photoshop is to keep it selected on. Why do I like to do that? Well, let's just hit done here and take a look at our new toolbar. It's it's churned up, but uh, if I'm working on something and I realize I need the eyedropper tool, well, I know the hotkey for the eyedropper tool is the letter I, so I can bring up the eyedropper tool. Well, it's giving me the 3D material eyedropper tool. Let's see if we can get to the regular eyedropper tool. There we go, the regular eyedropper tool. And sure enough, I can go in and select any color that I want, even though the eyedropper tool is not in the toolbar, except it is. It's down here at the bottom. Why? Because underneath this edit toolbar ellipsis, we can find all of the tools that we have gotten rid of from the toolbar. So they all just kind of consolidate and hang out here underneath the edit toolbar ellipsis. I'm going to restore the default so we can get back to the way this was. Um, let's say though you wanted to create a toolbar that was specifically for retouching and you wanted to get rid of basically everything but selection tools and like healing brush tools um, and maybe like the magnifying glass and hand tool. You get rid of all that stuff. You could come over here to your workspace drop down menu and save a new workspace by hitting new workspace and choose among other things to save the toolbar. So you can go in and set up a, a graphic design layout, a retouching layout, a, a web design layout, just a general Photoshop usage layout, anything like that. If you know there's specific tools that you never use, um, like for retouching, you may never use the 3D Material Eyedropper tool. So why even have it taking up space and cluttering things? I don't know. But you have the option to get rid of it if you want. And of course, you can always go edit toolbar and it brings up the same exact window. You can make all the changes you want, bring anything back, take anything away as you wish, hit the done button and you are ready to roll. Uh, ready to roll, I should say. So for the customizing toolbar feature in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.